So if I was going to start all over again in real estate, there's four things that I would do that I'm going to share with you in today's video. And so for all of you that have missed the daily walks, they're back. This is kind of what happens in Michigan. We have terrible winters. You can't really go outside and walk and make videos like this. But as you can see, it's a beautiful day. We still have snow on the ground, but I'm really, really excited to bring these videos back to you guys. As I continue to get my steps, it helps me to do both things that are very, very important. Uh, and I get to do them at the same time. So let's jump into today's conversation. So the first thing that I would do as my neighbor drives by, um, and this may be controversial, I would actually go work on a team. Okay, so if I were to start over again, I would go work on a team, but not just any team. I would find a team who primarily focuses on outbound lead generation, and I would work on my sales skills. And I would stay on that team, assuming that I got just that, that this was a team that promoted outbound prospecting, proactive lead generation. They promoted working on sales skills. They promoted treating real estate as a sales business, as it is, and that team provided administrative support so that all I had to do was focus on sales and the team could focus on all the back end administration of the business, all the client service stuff. And I just learned how to sell and I learned how to put deals together. And I would stay on that team until I did probably I would say between 35, 45, 50 deals, somewhere in that range. And that might take you a year, year and a half on a high, high producing team. And that would be the first thing that I would do. Quite frankly, it's exactly what I did when I started my career. Number two, after that, here's the second thing I would do. This is just for me, for you, it might be different. I would leave that team and I would go find a hundred percent commission brokerage. I wouldn't go to a big brand because the way that things are right now, and I've proven this opening an independent real estate brokerage, and I didn't for a long time because of the fear I'm about to tell you, I would go to a hundred percent commission brokerage. I wouldn't worry about going to a big brand name because the money in which you're going to give up in exchange for that name, isn't worth it from the standpoint of client acquisition. What I mean by that is this, I was always worried early in my career that, you know, I had to be with a big company. Otherwise people wouldn't do business with me. I had to be with a Remax or a Keller Williams or a Century 21 or a, a big brand name. And if I was with an independent, I would worry that that would hurt my business. Well, for me, probably the opposite is true that when I, went independent, I had more freedom to grow my business the way that I wanted. Not only did it not hurt, it probably helped me. So in my experience, it makes a lot more sense to go to a hundred percent commission brokerage where you have the freedom to run your business the way that you want while keeping all of your commission in your pocket, not having to give up any of that commission to a brokerage because you've proved to yourself that you're the reason you're successful, that you're the reason prospects do business with you, and that it isn't, doesn't have anything to do with what company you're with. That'd be the second thing I would do. The third thing I would do is this. So we're, we're off the team. We've done 40, 45 deals. Now we're at 100% commission brokerage. The third thing I would do is I would look to hire a coach not any coach. This isn't a plug for you to coach with me. This is, a, this is a plug for you to get into coaching. And the reason is this. I wouldn't be where I'm at without it. There's not a whole lot more to add to that. That's just the truth. I would not be where I'm at in my life, and I'm happy where I'm at in my life. And that is a result of leveling up and finding people 
who've achieved what it is that I want to achieve in life and investing in myself and my growth with coaching. And when you hire a coach, there'd be two things I'd, I'd specifically look, uh, look to. Number one and most important is I would get into a coaching relationship with someone who's going to work on your skills primarily over everything else. Are you working with a real tactician? Are you coaching with somebody who can really develop your communication, your sales skills? That'd be number one. And then number two, amongst many, many other things, we're talking about priorities here, accountability. So those would be the two things I'd focus on when, if I were to get into a coaching relationship. And then number four, once I hired a coach, because the coach, the goal of hiring the coach when you leave the team is to create the environment that you had when you were succeeding on the team. And a lot of people, I think, maybe lose sight of, well, why is it that I succeed on this team? And then when I go off on my own, I can't duplicate those results. And it's because of the environment. It's because of the culture. It's because of the accountability. It's because of the visibility. So when you're by yourself, it's very dangerous. As we know, we're independent contractors. And when we're left on our own, many times, some people are better than others, but many times, what do we do? We take the path of least resistance. So hiring the coach not only helps you develop better skills, they will, a great coach will create an environment with high levels of accountability, daily visibility, a similar environment that you had when you were on the team. So once you've done all of that, the fourth thing that I would do is I would hire a full-time assistant. If I started all over again, I would hire a full-time assistant. And so if you look at what we've done is we've recreated what we had on the team when we were succeeding on the team for ourselves and our profit margins should be a lot higher. We should be able to net more money in our pocket by going to a 100% commission company, hiring a coach, having a full-time assistant, to, uh, and that assistant, mind you, so I don't forget, I would get them licensed so I can have that person do showings, write offers, negotiate contracts, negotiate inspections, negotiate appraisals. And so all I had to do is what I'm best at, my one thing, and that is client acquisition, going out there, prospecting, finding opportunity, bringing opportunities into the business. And I could have a really high level licensed assistant who can handle all of the client servicing, all the non-revenue generating activities. And I'll throw in a fifth bonus one that I just thought of just now. I haven't made one of these videos without notes in a while, so I'm just thinking through things. The fifth would be that whatever if I were to start over again, because I did this wrong, I would focus on one lead generation pillar and I would master it for a long time before I looked to add another one. What I mean by that is, like many, I struggled in the beginning with some shiny object syndrome because I was like, man, there's so much information out there. There's so many ways to do it, to get clients, that is none of which are right or wrong, good or bad. They all work. And it's like a, it poses a lot of problems for us because it's like, wow, that thing looks like it would work better than this other thing. I might enjoy that better. So my whole point is pick one and it doesn't matter what it is. If it's going to be direct outbound, it's a direct sales activity, go all in on it. It will work. If you're going to go all in on inbound content marketing, go all in on that. It will work. I'm coaching an agent right now and he did 15 million last year in his second year, all from YouTube. If you're going to door knock, go all in. If you're going to do open houses, I coach another agent. All she does is open houses in luxury markets. 
she'll do 20 million this year. All open houses, five open houses a week. If you're going to do direct mail, go all out in direct mail. If you're going to go, you're going to do some internet lead buy. Okay, I just made a video about that. If that's what you want to do to grow your business in the beginning, do it. If you're going to focus on your database, do it. If you're going to focus on networking, go all in. The point is, if you, they all work, if we work, right? So pick one thing, succeed in that one thing before adding another channel versus picking one channel, not getting results, and then bouncing from one thing to the next. I think that's a recipe for, for failure, quite frankly.